It's time to wipe the tears from our eyes and rise again. Hello and welcome back everybody to Howling Stones. Are you all ready to enter the south wing today? Because that is exactly where we are headed. After the challenges of the boss wing in the west, we're going to be heading south. So saddle up, we're in for a ride. Yeah, that was uh, that was a heck of an ending to last video, as you all knew. I didn't know that could happen. I actually saw it happen again this weekend. Um, some poor sap tried to run out of the teleporter and brought all those mobs and trained the entire entrance. There's like 20 people in Howling Stones. Oh man, I felt so bad. I feel like a bad example, which I kind of am. But I know better now, I'm less ignorant. Anyway, breaking off, we're just we're just clearing up. Going in the south. We got the we got the key to south. But I wanted to just emphasize, give you all a fair warning. Before you enter south, make sure you are absolutely ready. You have all those items that I proposed in my first video. Either a circle at a shadow multiple rings of shadow so you can instant invis when you stand up. Um, I would highly recommend having a West Commons cap. I don't. I'm going against my own recommendations. And because of it, I've had to use a few corp um, coffins. So it's up to you. Spending time in misery, coming back in here and summoning your corpse or using a West Commons cap that you've got to spend, what, 90 plat to recharge? And I'd also recommend, I'm going to be showing you a keyless entry. Make sure to have charges of ants potions if you're a medium or larger race. And stocking probes. Then shrink twice, use your demi lich to get up in Jimmy and Jimmy into the door and launch a stocking probe just like this. Uh, well, okay. Not like that. <sighs> well, we're all about showing you what to do and what not to do. Don't do that. Yeah, you need to take care with the stocking probes. I'm glad I got this. I'm glad I got this footage taped because stocking probes are level one. They're considered like level one. So that means if you are KOS, Anything that's KOS against you is going to come and just attack your eye. Now, the good part about it is, as you heard, the ah, ah, ah. Now, of course, I'm in a skeleton form, so that wasn't me. But that's the first time I've heard it. I think it had, like, a human voice. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But it can take harm touches, too. So if you have Holgrish Elder Beads, that can be an advantage. And you can also life tap off of it too if you're a necro, but more so for the monks that are working in here, launch launch an eye to take harm touches. Okay, well let's try that again. Now we're still jimmying the door. So basically, yeah, you shrink twice, you walk into the door, shrunk as far as you can, then use your demi lich, kind of like I am. And then we're gonna try to shoot the stocking probes a little bit differently. What you'll do is you'll click on your stocking probe, you'll start moving and pacing forward, hold your forward button. Now as you see, because of what happened, I'm a little nervous, but we'll get over it. I'll take off my um, illusion. And I'm just gonna, well, I was gonna invis my, and, Invis versus undead to myself, but as soon as I click a stocking probe, that's gonna go away. So you see how I clicked the stocking probe. I went just into the left corner there, so that's a little bit safer. Now I'm a fan. I, I enjoy watching Shug's streams on Twitch. He's flawless at doing it. So he'll hold forward. It's look looks like he's just running a forward, just doing a running in place just running and then he launches a stocking probe 
And as soon as it comes out, he knows when to click it off, so it doesn't get aggro of anything. It's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's spectacular. But you get me. Now, I'm being a little extra cautious, as you can see. I just left the stocking probe. Now, what the stocking probe will do once you launch it is it, is it pushes you a little bit into the door more than you already were. So it might take some monkeying around. It might take some experimenting. This is my first time doing it. And as you see, I got through. Yeah, just you got to be really careful. It might be advantageous to pull everything out. But we that's why we got our key. So if you just wanted to start in the south wing, you literally could. You don't need to do north or west. But I'm doing this crawl as intended this is an as intended crawl but for those of you who are fans of crawling south and or east there's your way to get around without any keys so and those shrink potions are like 225 on blue so two charges like what 45 50 plat what's that worth bypassing an entire hour two hours three hours in some cases of grinding i say it's invaluable if you're an enchanter you could just do gnome and then as long as you're a big illusion you can switch in that big illusion or you could just cast enchanters can get through it so we got pretty lucky with the foyer how it spawned it's all undead so we could just go through here and check it out um, I think the, yeah, there's like three or four times I've come through South that it's been all undead in a foyer. So it seems to get a pretty lucky roll. That way we can just invis versus undead and kind of take a gander. Now, as you'll see, you're in a minute in the corner. There's one static in the corner there. That's kind of off to the left of the stairs. There's a path that goes up up and down that's that sepulcher he's got a blunt and a torch that's not great to zone down to and then over in that other corner there's two statics you can't see them you can kind of see it right there but there's a specter and then across from the specter there's another static in the in the corner it's a pretty tough break because you got two roamers and then three statics in the room i don't recommend fighting and breaking the room i'll show you what i do here but this happened to be my best break and it did spawn a devourer so i went ahead and pacified everything again back to my previous of what to have i'd also recommend a charisma gear kit i've have 130 i got some more items 130 and i've been having a lot better success with my pacifies and while we're taking down this living, here's a scan of the loot here. The South has probably the best loot in the zone outside of urns for Drusella and a couple items from East. But you got your Crypt Spectre with Sasha Dragonborn. That's an up upgrade to B um, FBSS. It's got a, also a couple other good items. I don't think it drops the blood point. I think the blood point only drops from the Crisp, Crip Feaster, but I'm not sure about that. I've only got Fire Opals. Um, Warding Star is pretty cool, but I haven't seen it. The Crip Feaster drops the Steel Hilted Flint Dagger. That's the, that's the dagger for the Rangers that has the 600, what is it? 625, it's Conflagration. So it's got a 625 direct damage proc. It's 428, so it's got a terrible ratio, but 625 proc. So if you get some decks, that is a wicked awesome dagger to go have some fun with. It's 50, I think, it procs at. And then, of course, everyone's personal favorite and most people's personal favorite, the embalming fluid. Not really a bad drop on it. It's got the entrouded vial, which is very close to crystal spider eyes, the acclaimed finger bone hoop, which I'll show it off later. I will. And the acclaimed hand of the reaper for you necros out there. That's an excellent offhand, excellent offhand. 
I used it quite a bit in my early days, but all right, we got the living. Now we're just going to pacify our charmed. We're going to feign death, queue out, come back, and that way we're ready to start crawling. Now this is a different break. So we got a devourer here. And then it's an elemental bone over there, I remember. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pacify, not the roaming, but the static. You'll see. Static. And as, as that notification came up, I did, you're, you're going to want to have harm shield up because how I get from the, from the drop down to the safe spot, you'll see here in a minute. So yeah, I'm going to slash target the elemental bone skeleton, and then I'm going to back off here. And then that's just the floor pan plan. That's kind of where we're wanting to run to. We're just going to run straight to where that blue circle is. All right, I'm going to pacify. And that pacify was successful, so that's good. That's going to help us get down. Now, this is the part you're really going to want to have a ring of shadows here. I know not everybody's going to have a circlet of shadow. We need an instant click in viz, so that way when we jump up, um, well, when we drop down, we're going to want to, um, click it right away. So there we had our two living here. We can just sit in the corner. Now that elemental bone across from us is fortunately it's the one we pacified. Then you see that devourer is a pather. There's a sepulcher skeleton right there. That is a static. And then there's another pather. So what we're going to do is we're going to root this corner mob. I am going to, since I already pacified that elemental bone, I'm going to charm it and I'm going to throw it at that skeleton. Now it won't work if it's a living, so you'll have to comprise a different plan, but you really just need to think on your feet. Then we got that devourer. So since that previous one's occupied, I'm just going to throw up my harm shield here. You are going to take some hits, so it would be beneficial to have a mana, mana skin up. Um, I didn't have one, unfortunately, but still made it. Now, here's what it looks like if you're just going normally without any shenanigans or <laughs> monkeying around with the mobs. And then looking from the safe spot here, we can see there is a big trap there. I don't ever go in that big open room, but in case you did, be very careful. But now that we're at the safe spot, we are right next to two named placeholders. So just like in the little map, there's this little alcove offshoot and it's kind of like pointing north. Um, we got really lucky. All of them were undead. So you can pacify all these. Um, thanks to Solo Artist for journeying with me while I was still learning this. But a Crypt Spectre was up while we were journeying through this wing. So we pacified everything and took it out. Now, if you're looking at the Howling Stones map, I'm assuming this is number seven. You can't really see it that clearly since the star is right over the number, but I'm pretty sure it's number seven. And I apologize, I was running a little really low on time, getting everything crammed in that I needed to for this video. I kind of had to cut out some. Um, I did do some of my own experimentation. Now, this is where you want to go if you're... Um, if you're soloing, it can be a pretty easy pull. There's just, basically, there's just one path that goes kind of where we are. And then there's two mobs as well as the name placeholder. So this can be a pretty easy spot just to set up and solo names every, you know, 20 minutes. But we got a golden bracer and it is not XR usable. <laughs> not that it's an upgrade anyway, but... Um, yeah, so that was our that was our bounty for taking down a Crypt Spectre. Also, I came in here another time. I was just pet tracking from the entrance and I saw some certain names were up. So I sat in the safe spot and I slashed target um, certain mobs and I got an embalming fluid. And I thought it was going to be in that number seven, which we had just taken on. But lo and behold, it was number eight. 
I was pretty uncertain and apprehensive that I was able to actually get it pulled successful because there's on a map there I got it pulled up you'll see there's I mean you go look up in there there's three static spawns right by the placeholder um, like those red arrows there's two pathers on the right well it would be on the east side of it on the west side there's one pather with another pather so there's like six or seven mobs I had to pacify and even even then I still missed I missed one but in a stroke of luck, I was able to lock it down. It did summon me once, but I screaming terrored that specter. I rested the dead and boom, goodbye. He forgot what was happening. <laughs> ben Blur successful. Yeah, I think charisma increases the chances of that happening with screaming terror and rest the dead. I was really proud of this kill. Really proud. Had no idea how it would all pan out when I came in here and saw I was in that spot. And I thought there was no hope. But I gave it a shot and it, and it pulled out. All right. We have downed our first embalming fluid. And we get an enshrouded veil. Which it's most common and worst drop. But even then it's not a terrible drop for a common drop. And now that we've had our fun, it's time to get serious and get back to business. Now we're going to be crawling back. Now we were in that safe spot and we're moving south of room seven. So you'll see a little square area. There's two pathers in here. Now I was really fortunate. You may not always get this luck, but everything pretty well was undead. And we need to find the key. There's this key is as far as I'm aware, it's effective to open two doors. That is the end of South, the last door in South, as well as the East wing from the entrance that is. Um, so we want to make sure that, yeah, just check all your blind spots. This door, it's from that large room where no, room number eight, it can have a path in there. I've, I'll, I'll, well, let's just, sh I'll show you in a little bit, but I've, I've been blindsided before. I'm just making sure that everything does not see in viz or in viz versus undead. I don't think most any undead do unless they're names, but I'm extra cautious, especially as my, this was my first time coming through this area. And I was uh, really cautious. And then we got our coin depicting Interruck. So its effect is a clarity. And like I said, it is effective in opening, from what I remember, south. And then also the east wing from the entrance. Now, I haven't confirmed that it can open the east wing from the entrance, but I'm pretty sure it does. But now what we want to do is we want to get down towards room 11. Room 11 is where our next name is, and that's the entrance to East Wing. So we're going to start out in that little squarish rectangular room again. And I had to do some fighting here to get some clearing. So what I'm going to do is there is a living creature that is in that room. Here's how I traverse when I, when I have that. I mean, I could... Rest undead. Okay, maybe everything's undead. Uh, yeah, there's that bio golem. So I was being extra cautious. Now, it's not going to see you if you're panning and hugging the wall to the east side. But I was being a little extra cautious here. I had to do a little bit of clearing to get a living out. I didn't show it because, again, I was just really running out of time. I was really cramped for time on this video. So that's a blind spot right there. And a pulsing bile came down and ended. Solo artists and I run. And I'm here to tell the world, number one, solo artist, I'm sorry. I ended our run. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. But also to tell everybody to watch the blind spot. 
you can easily see that path or from the, you know, kind of where that safe spot is. You can just look at through there and see what the path is before you come here. But it's always best to check anyway. But here's how I dealt with that wing, just in case if there are living creatures up. That's kind of what I did. Is it safe? Not necessarily. But fighting everything in here isn't safe either. That's why I'm being very careful in traversing. I'm not... I'm not killing everything here. And here's room. Gosh, I don't even know. I think it's room 10. There's a bunch of diamonds on it, but that's a placeholder for a name room too. We just want to be careful, make sure nothing living's in there. There is a feaster, but I don't think it'll see it if we just hug the corner there to the east side and traverse lightly. I was trying to see if there was a named in there. Which, at this time, there wasn't, I knew for sure, but later we'll show that off. I actually did get a name to spawn in there and get it pulled out. It's an Undertaker skeleton. All right, well, let's continue on here. Yeah, like I've got here, there's a little path right there. There's a Hexpone skeleton, and that is the entrance to the, it's not necessarily the South Boss, room but the end of the south wing and the portal pad let him go in there then we are gonna hug this corner just like this now you have that but you can kind of duck and shimmy through that broken wall and pretty much everything down there is undead so that's good and then going up north is a little tunnel. It is the safest spot that you're going to find outside the safe spot that we camped at. Uh, and Lakos met his doom. Poor Lakos. Well, hopefully all wasn't for naught. But yeah, here's the map getting there. We're kind of in that circle blue, but our destination eventually will be to go down south past the portal room. But before we do that, I'm going to show off a couple things here because this was a this is a fun place to grind out some names. First of all, when you're in this area, be careful not to stand too close because that is actually a false wall leading to room I can't even read it. I think it's room number nine, which is a placeholder named. There is a hex, or I shouldn't say hexbone. At that time, there was a hexbone skeleton that was wandering, but it will attack you and possibly bring some friends if you are too close. So I like to stay about right here. And hopefully that the path or wonder that goes through this area hopefully it's undead it won't cause you too too much trouble basically you just need to invis versus undead keep that up at all times or rest the dead easier just to invis versus undead and then i'm just doing a little extra investigation so i'll, I'll show you a map here in a little bit but it's not entirely accurate there are more spawns in here than what the map leads on so yeah there are four static spawns I tried to fill it in a little bit better. And then a wonder that comes from the portal room up north and path, path is in front of the name placeholder there. So in room number 11. So keep that in mind. I got really lucky and they were all undead. So I just pacified everything. Again, this is a testimony. I highly recommend having a high charisma set. I had about 130. As long as the spawns don't get too high and you don't get helot. Too many helots. Um, I was able to pacify fairly easily and fairly consistently, fairly safely. I just throw on my pet to absorb any harm touches and then I would go. From this area, it makes it easy so you don't have anything casting on you if you do get a critical resist. So that's why I really like this area. As long as undead were up. But while I'm fighting the Skeleton Sepulchre, obviously this was not a hard fight because I got every, I got it solo pulled. So I just wanted to say that a lot of this zone depends on layout for Necromancer. I didn't do anything amazing here. It just was a good layout. 
All right, we've got our... That was our first solo challenge in the south that I was able to complete, and we got a Kailong Warhelm. So, yeah, not bad little piece of headgear there. Really nice for a priest class, paladin. Starting out. And then also in that south area, I also got an embalming fluid to spawn. Now, I didn't do the full pull again here. We got... It wasn't as good as a makeup. As you see, there's a bio golem in the room. But I was able to get it pulled. And heavens yes, we got a finger bone hoop. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. I was really wanting one of those just because it was one of the best drops you can get here in all of Howling Stone. So I'm, I'm pretty jacked I got that. And fortunately, there is that, that helot skeleton came from just that room you know number 10 right by where the path pathers are so i was able to get it pacified again so now we're going to work on i didn't plan on this initially but there were some named in that room number 10 that i was able to get and as that red arrow indicates there's a path that goes down now we know the pather um, i took that one out that is right by the broken wall i pacified everything in that room and I just sent my pet pet attack to go pull it back and thought I was going to get it solo. But as you see, it brought a friend and it was that path or so be careful. <laughs> so what I did instead is I tried a different method. This was kind of risky because my pet was getting a little bit low health and I didn't feel completely confident in being able to take care of care of that helot specter and the balm at the same time so what i did is i snared the fluid i queued out and i came back and the fluid was still there so that was one way i've i've tried to do some snare pulling techniques like that in here it's um sometimes it's successful but more often than not it's not because yeah, it takes me about a minute, 15 seconds to get back. And as you see, it starts running away. I wasn't going to let that happen. So what I did, this is really risky, but I, <laughs> I just rooted it. And I'm waiting for my pet to come. Uh, well, the skeleton, and then I'm going to charm to make my pet anyway. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous here. Oh, where, oh, where could my charm pet be? His toes scurry the halls. When he enters the doors, there's feet to never restall. Oh, where, oh, where? There he is. All right, come here. <laughs> and pacifies off. Oh, boy, I'm just glad that charm landed. Otherwise, that could have been extremely problematic. Now we want to get our health back up in quick order. We're going to put vexing on. And I just hope, hope that charm doesn't break. Now the reason why I took some hits coming back this way is because of what I showed you earlier. I didn't want to take a chance and have that pather back behind the false wall. Aggro and harm touch me. Because anything that can go wrong in Howling Stones will go wrong in Howling Stones. Fortunately, we pulled off and at least managed to get everything under control. I'm back up to full health. Um, man, I'm doing okay. Not doing great. I like to have as close to full health as I can because when I get in a pinch like this, I just want to nuke and burn down the name so that way we can get done as soon as possible. Fortunately, I wasn't smart and I didn't bring any torches, so that means no dual wielding pets, which I tend to survive on breaks, but the longer you go in a fight with the charm pet, the more likely the charm pet is going to break. So a little bit of a risk reward factor there. I don't know. It's 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 tough to come to a definitive conclusion. You got another in Shrouded Veil, vale. so that's pretty nice. Probably put that on another tune. 
but yeah, big risk reward and you know, do you go for longer fights where you, your pet's not going to tear you, tear you up or dig into you or just go for, you know, glass cannon approach. Just depends how I'm feeling that day, I suppose. If I'm feeling saucy and frisky, then I'm probably just going to put a torch and say a Hail Mary and go for it. But this time I wasn't feeling that saucy and I didn't have a torch. And also in that room, we've got a Crypt Feaster that we were able to spawn. So basically just pacified everything in the room, took out this roamer. I waited till that roamer went back north and just took it out here. Now, if you do it this way, there's also another, that other roamer that goes in that room to the south. I think it's room 11 where that, where it leads to the portal room. There is a small chance it can aggro if you pet pull or pull a mob through that little area so this is probably about just as safe as anything else but for our trouble we got a fire opal that's right sadly no still flint hilted dagger today and the last name i was able to successfully pull was a crypt specter we got oh so close to winning and being successful but Sadly, our time was cut short here. Yeah, pretty good run. I wasn't able to get the Spectre Spiritualist, unfortunately. I saw him a couple times, but couldn't get him to spawn. All right, well, now that we're done having our fun, we are going to go back here. Here's the teleporter room. Now, I'm not sure. I didn't obviously didn't step out because I didn't want to remove all my progress. But from what I've examined or understood from live this is actually a zone out so you step on that pad it is a zone out so basically you're designed to come through the, it's designed so you come through south wing get your coin depicting inner ruck zone out come back and go through the east wing lo and behold there is a whole different chamber of howling stones as you see, that winds back to east. There's a secret path that you can go through. And I'm trying to find it. It's somewhere <clears throat> around here. I thought it was down here. But I can't remember where it's at. Maybe it's, um, let's go, let's go up the stairs here. Check the stairs. Ah, see that? Yeah. Now I kind of fumbled around for a little bit, but did you see that area that was kind of shady tinted? Let's try it right here. There it is. Yes, we are going to be crawling through this back area. Don't expect a lot of impressive kills. Part of my goal is just to get through Howling Stones and do an entire crawl at any expense necessary with 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 whatever it takes whatever it takes to get to the east port out that's what i'm going to do all right well in review we started and crawled through howling stones south wing we saw an embalming fluid uh, we're able to double team a crypt specter got our key to go through the south portal room and to enter the east wing um, saw a couple other names a crypt feaster as well as a couple more embalming fluids as well as the skeleton sepulcher but that's going to do it for south we're going to crawl through the nether regions of terrasis the shades the shadows the untrodden trail so to speak and see what we can find lurking in the darkness Sincerely, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for liking, subscribing, commenting. And this episode, special thanks to solo artists for crawling with me when I was still a little bit ignorant and green. But I appreciate you all, and I hope to see you next video. Thanks again.